in the line getting made. Enjoy yourself on tour? No. Okay. I mean, it's just, just bad tiring. Come here. The only part of the tour I like is the performance. That one hour I'm on stage, that's it. The rest is hell. You'll get used to it. You have to. Oh, I'm used to it. You have to. I just don't like it. Man, 50. I usually celebrate when, when especially black men get to 50. I call it the 50-yard line. Mm -hmm. And there's a way to go. But that man, had to, he, he lived 75 years in the 50. So, and here, here's the thing about it. Whatever he had in him, he gave it, and we have that because he got it out of him. Mm -hmm. And and it wasn't seemed like it wasn't even enough arts for him to get out. He excelled in everything he touched. He has excelled in film. He excelled in the music. And earlier, me and UCP talked about how that man torched that stage like few others. Uh, his first big tour, with, uh, also Jay Z's big first big mm -hmm. tour, ninety eight, big time. hard lock, uh, ninety nine, the hard knock life tour. I visited him for a couple of days. You know, DMX is going to come up after, you know, uh, Red Man and Method Man, who's also going to set the precedent in <laughs> ripping it up. And so Jake put a package together, man, which was a, a traveling rhyme circus that was outstanding and also brought touring back for the particular time in arenas and stadiums. And um, and they were, they were honing their chops. But DMX, I remember, came out, man, and I was telling you earlier, see, he, he like, forget platinum or, or silver chain, whatever the chain at the time. Dude came out in what I thought was a bike chain. <laughs> <laughs> came out in a bike chain around his neck. No shirt and a bucket of water. Not a water bottle. A bucket of water. And maybe I'm hallucinating, but he commits to, to tear that stage up so much that they had to call the fire department, man. And it, and and. Steel sharpened steel, man. Mm -hmm. And that's how Jay became, I, you know, I swearly believe that after that tour, Jay knew what it was to take the road to superstardom. Because let me tell you, man, DMX carnivorous, man. And, I, and understand this. When you had Jay and DMX come in to the Def Jam scene, we had a crazy year in 1997 where yeah. Pac and Biggie got killed. Yeah, yeah. And Def Jam saw the wherewithal to replace these two iconic figures with the same sentiment. I mean, Biggie, all right? Jay comes in, replaces that Brooklyn vibe. Not the same thing, but a similar vibe that people purely miss. Mm -hmm. Before they even got Biggie a lot, Jay came in. Pac is a hard dude to come in and fill his shoes because Pac had some tenure and... X, Dark Man X comes in with not just one album, but two albums in one year. And that was considered like impossible. So Jeff Jam, and, and, and we left in 1998 and moved on to other pastors, Public Enemy. I was pretty much saying, well, listen, you guys got to feel, it's great to have this melodic stuff, club stuff, pop and bottle stuff. But who is going to come with that bite? Who's going to bring that noise? Who's going to come with that ugliness? Mm. And sure enough, man, when I saw him that night, I said, Def Jam going to be all right because they got this dude, DMX, who is taking no prisoners and making no mistakes. DMX was also a vet. He started out kind of making records around 91, 92. Mm -hmm. He was with the Rough House family with Hill and, and, and cats like that. And, um, and the food is even. But, you know, he went through a couple of deals and found his niche with Def Jam. Mm. And, um, you know, the, the thing about it, it's like uh, he comes out of the idiom of knowing that there's a big L over here, knowing that there's a Nas over yeah. here. Found that boy, nailed the boy, and took it to another level. Spiritual, highly spiritual. Hit the stage. We'll talk about uh, MC Hat. You, you can't just say, I got studio records. The dude would come out and be better than his records. Mm -hmm. That's the hardest achievement for any MC or rapper or any performer, whether it's Dion Warwick or Leo or whoever. Mm -hmm. You have to bust your records in the ass. And that's mm -hmm. what DMX, DMX made those great records even seem pale in comparison. Because if you saw those records, and if you saw those records in the right type of crowd, it is going down. Protect the mm -hmm. scoreboard. You know, move everybody under the exercise because the roof, the roof is about to come down. And this is why, and, and this is why uh, is like, for example, uh, Public Enemy, the first group that 
a boxer came out, the champion came out. Mike Tyson came out on Welcome to the Terror Dome. He mm. took no other record until way later on in the game. Mm. But he came out on Welcome to the Terror Dome. Later on, Mike Tyson comes out on DMX. Yeah, yeah there's Red Man in there, there's KRS in there. Yeah. But let me tell you, Mike is coming out on something that he figured that was something that's going to match his bite. Box is going to come out on something that's going to be ferocious. I don't know what Floyd and them come out on today. I don't know what NBA players warm up in the locker room with today. But back then, you had to come out with a snarl and ugliness. And that's why the Knicks chose DMX yeah. to get that pumped yeah. up. 999 nine, 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 Knicks. 999 nine, 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 Knicks. How are you going to come out with chords and melodic schemes and yeah. synthesizers <laughs> and auto tune? <laughs> nah. <laughs> yeah. You coming out with slap head banging and DMX was more than music. He was, you know, he got it all out of him, out of himself. He made it all work and um, he made it work worldwide. He took it to the stage, took no prisoners. He spit hard as hell. He was spiritual. He'll reach in the crowd. And there's one thing, the goal of when you on that stage, the one goal is to reach in that crowd and grab their soul. And that's what mm -hmm. he did all the way, all the way up to like two weeks ago. And I got to give credit to that capture. Yes, I'm bent out of shape. No, I'm not sad. I, I get angry when I hear things like this. Mm. You know, pray for my anger. But at the same time, you know, I'm like Jay said it best. You know, don't hate the player, hate the game. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, I don't, I don't look at anybody that shines up the drug industry. Mm -hmm. I don't look at anybody that sh shines up gangs or or the criminal criminal element. We know that's a reality. But when you shine it up and try to make it glamorous, that's another thing. And he didn't make it, he didn't shine it up. He said, yo, man, this is, you know, dark and, and hell is hot, man. Yeah, it's very transparent. And, 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 it's, and it's ugly, you know what I'm saying? It's ugly, and it's not the way to go. And he scared a lot of people from going there in those direction, too. Mm. He's scared cats. It's like, yo, man, I don't want to go where he's at, and he's telling us not to come here. So you got to give that credit. So when, the, when trash papers like the Post comes out, and out of all the things to say, the New York Post is going to talk about the, the cribs that yeah, he lost. Yeah, the Fausts that he lost. That was that was wild. WTF, yeah. man. For yeah. real. So, uh, but we know that's out there. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Know the game already, man. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so, it, you know, and, and I told you earlier, um, see, well, I, I'm a little bent up, especially, you know, because of, you know, I think somewhere in my voicemails, which I don't check since my father passed some years ago, mm. you know, there might be, you know, D left a message for, for me to get involved on his last record. And somehow it got lost in the translation. So I'm bent up about mm. that. I'm not going to check him because there's like 18,000 voicemails in there. Yeah. But that was my reason. So, you know, I mean, you know, you could be bent up about a, a lost opportunity where, where it was just about being, you know, be, I'm like the uncle to these cats, man. Yeah. So when they call me, I'm there, man. And when I when I miss the call, um, you know, I'm a little bent. So that's it. A lot, a lot of people don't know that you know all the artists that you really took under your wing, Chuck. You know, including Tupac, including DMX. So um, that, yeah. that that was major, man. Very very unfortunate. You know, old folks. So, yeah, Ice Cube Ice as well. Cube, Ice Cube as well. Ice yeah, Cube, big time. Queen, yeah. La Queen Latifah. My thing is like, don't keep them in a, in a, in a cage, you know, give them wings and let them fly as okay. high as they can, man. Yeah. And, and, you know, and don't even, you don't do things like seek credit. This is what you're supposed to do. You they come through, it's just like in ball, man. They come through, you coach them, you let them go. You let them do their thing, man. And, 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 then, and then you take to the fan seats. I'm in the fan seats and I love it. That's why I love why what you guys are doing, what all the other Nick blogs are doing. And, and, and seriously, that, that, that the media has to take note. Um, Max is taking note of UCP. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> knowing, that, hey, knowing that you just can't just throw garbage out there and expect us, us to catch it. Nick Nation is strong. Smarter than Big that. Big up man. to everybody out there, you know, everybody out there that I go with. And I'm always in the pits. So I don't want to just hog up any time, man. Uh, you catch me in the chats, man. And, and I watch y'all on the tube. And it's nothing better on TV.